in high performer lifestyle um those of you who are new to just watching being in the group and now um you've been called to watch these videos and i hope that what i've been sharing with you and all the videos and especially this week as we start to wind down this year i hope that what i've been sharing with you that anything that something is landing for you is making a difference for you that is always always my intention and top priority when I come on here um, and do any live with you. It's to reach out and to, to lend a voice and to, to, um, to share something and have you think in a way that might have you open up to something, that might have you take action um, in your life, in your business, and have you think in a way that has you see what it is that you desire, has you see the possibility, and then has you act um, in a way that would have you get there, okay? So that is my intention. Um, my name is Jessica Perez Beebe, and I often work with um, entrepreneurs, driven entrepreneurs who've had success in their life, but um, you know, you're either at a plateau, you are experiencing a moment of doubt, um, you're lacking your passion, you're forgetting your why, and, and that happens, right? That happens not... I mean, that happens to driven people. Often we think that, you know, someone who's driven and ambitious and successful, um, that they're always riding at that level. And the truth is, unless you're, you're, you're plugged in, you know why you're doing something, you're, you're keeping yourself on your edge, you're working with um, a coach or community that is looking out for your best interest, that is calling you higher, that is calling you forward, that is stretching you, right? Because typically you are the one helping everybody else in your family, you're helping all your clients, right? Typically you're the most driven and ambitious one in your community um, or in your tight circle. If that's you, say, yes, that's me, right? Like, can you relate? So it's really important when you're the most driven, when you're the one who's typically coaching other people, supporting other people, that you actually have someone to do that for you too. And so that is my intention because Listen, I know, like me, if you're driven and you are and you're ambitious and you don't want to be just average, right? You want high performer um, results and experiences in your relationships and your business and your life. If you want that, then I know that it's really important for you to be connected with communities and peoples that are high thinker right? Peoples. I did say that. <laughs> so I know that it's important for you to constantly set new goals. And you know what? My biggest mindset mentor, um, Esther Hicks, says the same thing. There's nothing, with, nothing wrong with being driven. And if you're driven, right, along the way, somebody has told you like to slow down, pull back, you've done enough, you've accomplished enough, right? We've all got that. Or, or we've all gotten that. Or people have said to us, um, over and over again, um, you know, um, why are, why do you, why can't you just be good with this? Right? Like, why are you doing that? Why are you, you know, why are you now, you know, um, pursuing this thing? Right? So a lot of times the average person doesn't understand our drive, but what I love about what my mindset mentor, Esther Hicks was all about law of attraction all about energy, all about being in flow, not pushing, um, you know, but actually going with the stream. She says, guess what? You're always going to desire the next thing. It's how we are wired. It's how we stay alive. When you stop dreaming, when you stop desiring, you really start dying right? So when you stop dreaming, when you stop desiring, when you stop setting goals, when you stop wanting to be better, um, in whatever way better means to you, then we start dying. And so that's why we have the contrast in life. We get in front of us what we don't want so that we are very clear about what we do want. That's where our desires come from. That's where our, um, our energy and our curiosity to create something different comes from. So I just want to land that with you before we get into this final step about what I've been talking about this week. Because this week is the last week that I'll be on here live with you in 2020. Tomorrow is the last hot seat. You don't want to miss it. I've got something special for you. So we talked about this week about this being the season of anticipation, right? It's Advent season. Um, and it's 
it's the season of anticipation. And we talked about like, what are you expecting, right? What are you expecting in your life? Because what you expect to get is exactly what you get. It's exactly the energy you show up in, right? If you're expecting to succeed, if you're expecting to be abundant, to make more money, to have more love, more meaning in your life, then you best believe energetically you're gonna show up that way because you're believing for it and you're gonna attract it in. But if you're expecting things to be hard, everything to be an uphill battle, you're expecting that the world's against you, you're expecting that you know, you're gonna be broke, all of those things, then that is exactly the energy that you're going to show up in. And guess what? You'll just happen to start attracting people who think that way too and are in that energy. So we talked about how setting yourself up for what you're expecting next year is huge. Okay, and then we talked about being very, very literal, very specific about putting a name on what you're going to break the chains, right? Because what you're gonna leave behind, right? New year, not just a new year, but a new decade and energetically just a whole different energy that we're going into. So super important that you're not taking any crap that's been slowing you down, breaking the chains we talked about yesterday, getting out those wire cutters, and depending on how much junk you've got to leave behind, um, addiction, um, blame, laziness, anger, um, you know, um, whatever it is, right? Whatever that's holding you back. I, we went through it yesterday, but however much stuff you've got, you might have to get out the really thick wire cutters, right, to leave all that behind. Because whatever you take into this new decade, that's going to be the foundation that you're starting your year and your decade off with. And so if, you're, if your foundation has a lot of the shit from this last year and in this last decade that you know has slowed you down, that you know has sucked up your energy, has sucked up your, your uh, possibility, has kept you small, has done all those things to you that you've allowed it, if you take that into the next year and start your foundation on that, how do you think what you're building is going to be? How strong do you think it's gonna be? Is it going to be strong or is it going to be weak? And that's a decision you get to make. Because yeah, you'll get to a point where you might say, dang, here I am dealing with the same stuff again, right? It's still part of my foundation. And then how much work you're gonna to have to do to knock the house down and to lay a new foundation. You don't have to do that. You can start right now. You can start right now. So we talked about letting go, right? So that you can set up for what you're expecting. Letting go, clearing your energy, clarifying that energy to come into this new year. And you guys were fired up, those of you that were watching. Those that were even watching on YouTube, I got emails from you yesterday. So you were fired up. This supported you. That's how I know like the universe, God, whatever, is wanting me to talk about this because it's really connecting with you guys. And so like me, you're also feeling this real pull to like go in, to go in not just fresh, to, but to go in with eyes wide open, right? Like that, the eager, anxious, curious eyes of a child. You guys feel me? Where like the sky is the limit and you're ready to just go for it, where you are believing for the things that you want, right? You're believing for it, you're expecting for it. So because you've got that energy with you and you put names on it, yesterday we called it out, drinking too much, sleeping, um, it, it, like sleeping in, yelling at our kids, hiding, making excuses, um, being lazy, blaming other people, all of those things. We put names on it yesterday. Some of you were so brave to share with me and put your names on it like I put my names on mine. And so when we put it out there and we call it what it is, it no longer has power. Right? So we, we, are, we are taking those things that have slowed us down and made us sluggish, sluggish, and we are letting them go. We are cutting the chain. We no longer are tethered to the fence. No, no matter how long that chain has been, it's still been holding you back, right? It's keeping you at a seven or an eight or even a nine. Imagine if you've been operating at a nine or a nine and a half. Guess what? The big breakthrough, all the abundance, all the joy, all the like, whatever it is that you've been dying for that you haven't had, like the passion, the energy, all of that is in that last 
one percent or half percent so what if you could look at this new year in this new decade like that and i'm assuming that you are I'm giving you that credit like i'm giving to myself we are breaking the chains now the final step the final step in all of this and it's going to sound to you counterintuitive that everything that i just said but it's not and this is where in the magic lies this is why clients say to me um my assistant coach emma who's on here this is why people in my life say to me dang how do you do this and make it look so easy like how do you go through these like even you go through tough moments like crazy tough times i just saw you go through all this how do you do all that handle this do this set new goals double your business turn pro um you know strengthen your marriage have this really like how do you do all these things in a seemingly like a balanced way where you don't seem like you're ever losing it you're never in breakdown right here is the key if that's how you want to live if this is how you is if this is what you want and i've worked at this over the decades if this is what you want to here's the secret write it down write it down this is the secret you've got to surrender you've got to surrender to god's ultimate plan for you to the universe's plan for you this is what i call being driven by the vision vision driven right i've got that vision and i'm driven by it and i'm focused i've got blinders on nobody pulls me off course nobody no thing i don't care who's dying i don't care who's sick i don't care who's leaving me who's who's turning on me i don't care what's happening right like nothing pulls me off of my focus right so i'm vision driven i'm hooked into that vision and i am unattached i am unattached i know it sounds counterintuitive like the, they don't seem to go together but they do trust me this is where the magic is i see the vision of what i want i stay focused on it you got to break the chains to in order to get some of the things out that would pull you off focus and just like you i have to do that too on a regular basis on a regular basis i shared with you yesterday the two things that i'm cutting chains with and leaving behind and i don't just say it and i don't just tap into it energetically like i do and i don't just say it but i literally declare it i tell people in my family this is what i'm breaking i need your support in this i talk to my god about it like i make it a thing you see what i'm saying i put it front and center i don't try to hide behind it i don't try to hide it and figure it out on my own so i put a name on it right i break those chains i stay focused and then i surrender I surrender, I surrender, right? So you've got your vision, but you've got to be brave enough and faithful enough to say to God, this is my plan, God. This is my vision, right? I'm believing for it. I am believing for it. And at the same time, I accept that your will will be done, right? Thy will be done. If you're not a God believer, it doesn't matter. If this feels too religious, just say universe. I go, I say them both, right? Like your will will be done. You know better than I do what I'm capable of and where I am most needed and how I am most needed. Now, what that means is most of the time what I've found is that the vision I've had for myself even, isn't even as big as the one God has for me, right? So it doesn't mean like you're saying, oh, Jessica, I have my vision. And I was on focus, but God told me to just relax and stay at home and not be seen and hide. And he told me to play small. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. You know, because tip and, and I'm not saying it doesn't end up being something different, perhaps, than you visualized. Like, I got to tell you, that happens to me often. But it's because I've already been vision driven and I've been focused. So I have all that outside noise like it's not distracting me most of the time god and universe is calling you to make a tiny little tweak 
tiny little adjustment that's going to have you have amazing quantum leaped results, but you're so distracted by all the other crap that you're doing and all the other people you're listening to and all the other opinions you're trying to get and all the other doingness and busyness because you're not focused on one vision and you're not moving in alignment with that. You're all of that's going on that you don't even hear when God in the universe is having you turn a little bit right? But when you are focused like this and you are moving towards that bigger vision that's for the greater good of you, your family, your clients, the service that you want to do, the world, it's so much easier to hear what God's will is along the way if there's little tweaks and changes to be made. You hear me with that? I mean, it's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing right now. It's why I started out in one way, right? It's why I started out doing what I was doing. And when you look back in your life, you can connect these dots too. Look back and connect these dots where you had a vision and you were going a certain way. And then that was great, right? You were hitting goals. You were on your plan. Everything was working out. And then God had you shift a little bit or maybe a whole lot of it. And it all turned out better than you could have ever planned anyway. It doesn't mean that you don't plan. It doesn't mean that you don't have a vision, right? That's not what it means. It doesn't mean that you're just out there laying around waiting for life to happen to you. So as you're going into 2020, become a co-creator. Become a co-creator in every sense of the word with your God and with your universe and with your community. But it starts right here, heart and head, right? You've got to be honest enough and be real enough and be vulnerable enough and brave and courageous enough to just, just call out the stuff in your life that you know is holding you back. If you're hiding, I say this all the time, the devil loves isolation. The, the, the word devil is just any, like anything, anything that would have you believe that you are smaller than you are. Those thoughts and that energy and that behavior and those habits and those patterns that you fall into when you're hiding, when you're hiding something that you're ashamed of, when you're hiding you, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're trying to do everything on your own, right? That's where the devil gets you, right? It, again, don't get hung up on the words. It's just a great phrase. The devil loves isolation because it's true. By yourself is where you can, you, where you can just rot. And I don't want that for you and you don't want that. So it's time to believe for what you want in 2020. It's time to break the chains and leave everything behind you that doesn't serve you. Like, just call it out. Take back your power from these things. Get hooked into that vision, right? I think this is the time to get to get your spiritual practice, your relationship with God, your relationship with the universe, this is the time. I truly believe this is the time to really strengthen and deepen that relationship, that personal bond. It's not about religion. I believe in God, not religion, right? So, and if you believe in religion, that's great. So whatever your religion is, this is the time to get deep with it. But that personal relationship, talk to that that God, that, that universal spirit that is looking over you. What is it that you want for me, right? How can we co-create this vision for myself? And, and, and let's go, right? Let's go. Life is happening right now. This is the life as we know it. This is the one life that we have right now. And so be brave enough to believe for what you want to get in relationship with your God, with your higher being, and be brave enough to take action. Go into 2020 with guns a-blazing like I am, right? I am just so ready to say goodbye to this decade. Bless it for all that it has brought to me, all that I have learned from it, all of the people that I've touched and who have touched me. And I am ready to step into my bigger vision and in 
to God's even bigger vision than that. I hope this served and support you this morning. Um, leave your comments. I'm going to come back in um, and, and interact with you. And listen, if you're fired up and you know that you want to be connected with someone like myself and my team going into 2020, if you're an entrepreneur or a coach specifically, and especially if you're in the health and wellness industry, um, if you're a coach in that industry, um, if you're an athlete, like we really want to hear from you and talk to you um, because we have something really, really big coming up um, in 2020, big reveal coming up in January. But I want to talk to you first and foremost, if you know that that's the kind of support that you want and you're, and if you're an action taker, you're driven, then I want to talk to you. So send me a private message on Facebook and myself or someone on my team will get right back to you immediately. Otherwise, I'm going to see you tomorrow for the last hot seat and the last live of the year. I'm going to be with you with someone special. We're going to have a great time tomorrow. I'll see you live tomorrow, 645. Bye, everyone.